archives. I'm sharing this book called Tiger Woman, written by Lawrence Yep, and this is based on a Chinese folk tale. When I look at this cover and I see the title Tiger Woman, I it makes me wonder about who this woman is, who has the face of a woman, but she has tiger paws and she has a tiger tail. It doesn't look very happy. I wonder if that's a clue about what's going to happen in this book. So there she is, there is the tiger woman. There was once a selfish old woman who would never share anything. Her favorite food was bean curd, which she made into smooth white glistening sheets and cut into little cubes. Then she would steam it or boil it and fry it. On hot days, she would eat it cold with just a little bit of soy sauce and scallions. On market day, she ate her bean curd and rice on her doorstep so she could watch the spectacle. Farmers and shepherds and goat herds, sellers of birds and callers, uh, <laughs> sellers of birds, of crickets, of portrait painters and toy peddlers, all of them came to the square, even the rich folk in their sedan chairs on the shoulders of sweaty men. One day, as the woman stuffed herself, she watched her neighbor bargain with a farmer for a scoop full of grain. Just as she finished her meal, a ragged old man limped into town. And he saw her and he bowed and said, your bean curd gleams like the whitest jade and I'm so empty, please come to my aid. The old woman glared and said, a sillier thing I've never heard, I will not waste my sweet bean curd. The beggar shook his head. If you let your belly rule you, it will surely trip and fool you, the old woman replied. I'm a tiger when I'm famished, so be gone, old beggar, vanish. She poked him with her chopsticks to drive him away. The old man waved his staff solemnly and said, by wind and rain, by moon and star, you will be what you say you are, and he limped away. Between sips of tea, the woman ate her last cube of bean curd. Right away, her skin began to itch. But when she tried to scratch, all she felt was fur. Puzzled, she looked and saw that her hands had turned to paws. Her neighbor pointed in her direction and said to the farmer, I think my eyes are tricking me. Is that a tiger roaming free with claws so smooth they almost shine? Has it come to town to dine? Frightened, the old woman dropped her cup of tea and began looking around frantically for the savage beast. When the farmer saw her, the scoop fell from his hand, scattering grain all over. He shouted, that tiger's hunting for a treat and you and I look much too sweet. Then the two old men ran for their lives. The old woman looked down at her reflection in the spilled tea. Ooh, I can't quite see it. See the reflection down there? Who's that I see there in the tea? It's got my dress. The tiger is me. Far down the street, she saw the sunlight wink off the spears of the tips of many soldiers. Terrified. She ran into her house, but the soldiers pursued her. The captain waved his sword and shouted, a prize to the one who takes her head, I'll hang that head above my bed. As the soldiers closed in, the old woman desperately leapt out a window and hid inside a sedan chair. On the seat, she found half a piece of steamed bread that a chair bearer had been eating before he ran away from the tiger. I'd be a dumb ox to waste a snack. This bread won't be here when he comes back. Before anyone else could eat it, she greedily chomped it down. Oh, uh oh, now what? Instantly, her claws fused together. The sedan chair suddenly grew very tight until she grew so big that the sides of the chair split and she wore curtains on her ears. As the soldiers poured out of her house, they pointed their spears at her and shouted, Get a box, get a noose, there's an ox out on the loose. Oh my. Trying to escape, the old woman galloped into a tailor's stall. 
Out she burst wrapped in long sheets of dyed silk. Then she dodged through the portrait painter's booth and became a rainbow of different colored inks. Round and around the market she went, smashing hearts and knocking over stalls. Birds and crickets flew from their cages. Bro goats broke their halters and butted the soldiers. Trying not to make it shiny, there we go. Finally, the soldiers threw ropes around her neck and legs and even on her tail as an angry crowd gathered in the ruined square. The captain announced, since this ox has wrecked each store, its stakes must settle up the score. The old woman bellowed, but that would be a big mistake. You're sure to get a bellyache. Everyone ignored her. As the soldiers went to find a butcher, the old woman saw some grain on the ground. For a moment, her greed made her forget her fear. Even a dumb bird would eat this grain. The farmer's loss will be my brain gain. Hurriedly, she gobbled up the grain before anyone else could find it. In the wink of an eye, she began to shrink. And the ropes plopped to the dirt. In a bronze mirror lying on the ground, she saw that she was now a little sparrow. With a flap of her wings, she rose up into the air high above the wall of the market and soared over the high wall into a garden where willow trees stood beside a lake. A green pavilion thrust out into the water like a giant lily pad, and there a rich man fed some birds. This is how the rich folk live. I'll hide here as a fugitive. My refuge will be elegant, but I'm starved as an elephant. Well, that makes me worried about what she's going to become next. Landing among the birds, she pecked at a sesame seed. When the other birds complained, she chased them away. Soon she had gobbled up all the seeds on the ground. Oh my. As soon as she had swallowed the last sheet seed, she swelled up so fast, she knocked the surprised man into the water. He sputtered and cried, the doors are locked and my gates are barred. How did an elephant enter my yard? She tried to escape as the servants answered their master's calls for help. Wearing the pavilion roof like a hat, she headed for the nearest doorway, but she was so big she got stuck. With a lunge, she pulled the doorway. She pulled down the doorway and with it, the whole side of the pavilion. In a panic, she blundered through the mansion seeking some place to hide. She tried to crawl under a big four-poster bed, but the servants found her. She tried to squeeze inside the wardrobe, but smashed it into kindling. She tried to climb a set of shelves, but only wrecked a collection of prized perfume bottles. Ooh, what a mess. Finally, she wound up in the kitchen where a cook was chopping vegetables and slicing meat. Flapping her elephant ears, she looked around. I have worked up such an appetite. I must take one teensy bite. But why stop there? I'll be a swine to eat your food and drink your wine. As fast as her trunk could move, she crammed food into her mouth. Bowls smashed and knives and spoons fell from the table. When she had finished everything in sight, she began to shrink again. Looking at her reflection in the blade of a cleaver, she saw that she had become a pig. A hand grabbed her hind leg. Since you've devoured my lovely feast, you'll take its place, you horrid beast. And the cook tied her to a table. As she listened to the cook sharpen his cleaver, the old woman gazed at the glistening cube of bean curd that had fallen on the floor nearby. Once again, she remembered the old beggar and his curse. She grunted sadly. If I had fed that poor old man, I would end up, I would not end up in a pan. Why was I mean? Why didn't I share? He could have had half. It would have been fair. Since this was going to be her last meal, she nibbled sadly at the bean curd until it was gone. The moment she changed, the next moment she changed back into a human. The cook stared at her in shock. Who are you and where's my sow? I must prepare my supper now. The old woman stood up and glared at the man. Then, with a shrug of her shoulder, she turned and marched straight home. After that, beggars never went hungry if they came to her door. She served them cubes of bean curd, smooth and shiny as white jade, and she told everyone, in kindness, I've become a believer since I faced the wrong end of fever. 
that is the story of the tiger woman. <laughs>